welcome back to my channel. Uh, today is day three of December Daily and we are still on target, which I'm going to be perfectly honest is more than I expected this month. Um, I was like, I'm going to do day one. I might get day two by day three. We'll see what happens. And so I am, I'm full of enthusiasm. We are full speed ahead. Um, so for day three, I, um, I did the thing that I do every year, which is go to Target and get a few new ornaments for our tree. I am on a mission to build up a um, ornament stash of things that I've picked out from my home. Um, and it's cool. I mean, I'm sure it's cool to inherit ornaments and stuff. Um, I'm saying I'm sure like I didn't, like I did, and it's nice. But I also want a stash of ornaments that I've picked out myself that mean different things to me. Um, and so every year I go to Target and I limit myself to Target because I feel like if I started going on adventures and started looking in multiple places, this would become, oh, I just, I smudged that. I thought that was dry and it was not dry and I smudged it. Oh, well, it's going in the album. I'm not doing it over. Um, I'm actually going to hit this with my heat tool because I was pretty sure that was dry and then I just stuck my fingers in it and it was not dry. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I went to Target, um, and grabbed a few ornaments. I'm really upset about this as I literally stamped this. That just made it worse. I literally stamped this uh, 45 minutes ago and left it to dry um, and I was convinced it would be dry by the time I was ready to use it and it's not so I'm gonna hit that with my heat tool in a little bit and archival ink will stay on my hands for the rest of my life but anyways I went to Target and picked up a few ornaments like I do every year um, and I had every intention of telling a story of the ornaments that I picked up and then December like it like it does just surprise me with something completely different um which I think is kind of the fun of this project is all the weird and interesting things like you think you know what story you're gonna tell and then um that's not it and there I mean there's something to be said for pre-planning your albums right and for pre-planning your pages but I think there's a lot to be said for the spontaneity of just showing up every day going hey December what do you have for me today um so anyways, I, I have my pictures of my five ornaments and I printed them three and a half by three and a half and I have this um, card from a paper person kit and I have all of them so I can't ever remember which one this came from but it was a six by eight paper that I liked this repeat pattern and then I have three of the ten by eight papers from the I'm gonna say it's the main kit don't quote me um, that I'm going to use as a background and I haven't decided which one I'm gonna use so I went in Photoshop and I took the sizes of my photos which is three and a half by three and a half to kind of help me figure out how I wanted to lay them on this paper and I think this one was down there so that one oh this ornaments upside down so I probably shouldn't do it like that so that could go like that so I have this alpaca to kind of represent my like spinning journey um, and I do want them on a bias so I'm just going to try to recreate this, this schematic. And that's kind of why I made it because I figured it would be easier for me to have something to start with and for me to get here and then just be like, well, how am I going to fit these all on the page? So I think that is what I'm going to do. And I might actually cut another piece of this and put some of it here. And then these empty spaces, I'm going to use, um, put embellishments. So that's that's the plan. And actually, sorry about that. Just hit my microphone. I'm sure that sounds obnoxious. Um, while I like the way it is, I am going to just start adhering them down. Um, and then I'll talk to you about the things that I did in preparation for this page. So this page, it's it's my you know it's interesting how how these pages work. Like some days, like yesterday, for a perfect example, day two was super quick like I literally went in Photoshop uh, added some words to my photo and I was like cool process done and then today I'm stamping and smudging my stamping so that's cool um, and I'm sure that that's gonna drive somebody nuts that I put the smudge stamping in the album but we live life on the edge over in Tashi land oh I smudged this ink everywhere I probably should clean my hands it's getting everywhere um, we live life on the edge in Tashi land and life on the edge means we don't redo the stamping that took us 20 minutes to do the first time. Um, so if that does bother you, I'm sorry, please don't look at it. Um, and if you like living life on the edge with me, welcome to where we live dangerously. Also, I'm sticking these things down to this page and I just realized that I pulled out three different papers to audition three papers and I'm just going with the first one that my hands grabbed. So 
again, <laughs> literally living life on the edge. Um, and just taking risks, taking names, and keeping it going. So anyways, I did a few things. I stamped, and I actually recorded the stamping. I, okay, so this might not be your thing, but I actually find watching other people stamp really therapeutic. Um, that might be because I'm a weirdo. Uh, so I, I did film the stamping, and my plan is to just insert the footage here. Sorry, I had to, I had to, look at this as I put my photo upside down. Anyways, my plan is to insert the footage um, somewhere in the video where it makes sense and hopefully somewhere where I stop talking because yesterday I had to insert some footage and I also babbled like a ninny the entire time and left myself no room to insert the footage of um, me doing some random crafty things. So I will insert the footage of me stamping and my plan is just literally just to put it to some music. Like I'm not doing anything crazy with it. I'm not... I think the fun of it is just to watch the stamping. So I'm just going to put it to some music um, and insert the footage. But I... I've gotten all my photos adhered to this pattern paper. I am on a mission this year. We will see if it's a wise mission or not, but I am on a mission to use up at least half of the pattern papers in this pack. That might be a really lofty goal, um, but I think that they are fun places to build collages and grids on. Um, if you guys follow Morgan, Morgan has done like two pages with grids already and I'm obsessed. Um, and I think I watched Allie's foundation pages and she had a bunch of grid style pages in her, uh, her project. So I think they'd be fun to build really grid, um, build grids on. They'd be fun to use as pockets. Wow. I didn't cut that straight at all. What is wrong with me? They'd be fun to use as pockets or even to cut them down. Like there's no, there's no law that says you have to use them. Nope. I can't use this piece. I'm going to have to cut some more. Not unless I want to put it sideways and that would be silly. I'm going to have to use a different piece of it. Um, there's no law that says like you have to use things. Okay. I can't talk and work. So I probably should just work and stop talking. There's no law that says you have to use things the way that they were designed. Like one of my favorite things to do is cut up supplies. I cut up three by four cards all the time because I wouldn't use them any other way. All right. So I have this other little bit from that paper that I cut. And I just want to use it to fill in some of this empty space. My original intention was to cut up some journaling cards. And then I went through the journaling cards from the kit this year. And they're all story prompts. And none of them are real filler cards. And so they would not have worked for the page idea. I'm just looking at my smudge stamping and it's really making me mad. I might redo it. We'll see how I feel after I finish the page if I'm redoing the smudge stamping or not. It is very smudged. And it's very smudged in like one place and it's gonna break my heart we'll see we'll see how i feel about it i might like i'm saying it's gonna break my heart in like five seconds i'm gonna get over it all right so here are my ornaments stuffed down to my page um 
And then this, with the terrible smudge stamping, is supposed to live on top of it. Like that. So you can read the text and then you can see that there is something through it. And then those are the photos of the ornaments I got. Um, now that I'm looking at it, I kind of want to put some more of this paper. So I, I think I'm going to end up using the whole sheet after all. Because I'm just chopping it up and using it. I feel like th this might be the, the silly thing about di the visual triangle and all that stuff. Um, but once I put it down a second time, I feel like I need it a third time. Um, or it makes me sad. Like it just looks like I forgot to put it a third time. So we're going to put it a third time and it has to go like this okay so we're gonna put it in a third time we're just gonna go with it because it's making me sad with it not in there a third time and then these three places will be uh, a spot for an embellishment and I don't know what I'll use I'll probably use some felt I'll probably use a bunch of stuff we are literally making this up as we go there are no rules in Tashi land as evident by the smudge stamping in the corner that is making me quite sad all right here we go. So here's my grid. And like I said, I quickly made this mock up in Photoshop. I'm pretty close to like I stuck to it pretty close. Alright, so the other thing I did, get all this garbage over here, is I foiled. So um, this was a wow, I'm making a huge mess today. I'm not sure what that is. Mm, okay, I'm not sure what that is. Um, but this was a digital stamp from 2019. Um, and it's a physical stamp. I'm trying to erase this archival ink. It's not cooperating. It's a physical stamp set from Ali that I bought the digitals for. Um, and I just repeated it on an eight and a half by eight and a half square and then foiled it. And the reason I repeated it on an eight and a half, I'm going to have to clean my hands. I think I'm the one smudging this ink everywhere. I'm going to clean my hands. I'll be right back. I'm back with cleaner hands. We're going to see how much more chaos I can get into before I'm done with this page. Um, and I did stamp with archival. I know someone's going to ask me what ink I use. I did stamp with archival because I know it's vellum. And I scored this in the wrong place. I did stamp with archival because I know it's vellum and regular ink does not dry on vellum. Like I did, I did the right things. I just should have probably let it dry a little bit longer before... Um, or I probably should have hit it with my heat tool is really what I should have done. Like I should have heat set it, um, but I put it to dry for like 20 minutes and I thought that was long enough and clearly it wasn't. Also, I am messing up my scoring because I'm talking. But anyways, what was I saying? I don't remember. Oh, so I repeat, I took the stamp in Photoshop and I repeated it on an eight and a half by eight and a half canvas and then I printed it with my laser printer. I have too many printers. Um... I have my original printer, which is my Canon Pixma MG7720. At this point, I only use that to print journal cards. Like if I'm printing hybrid papers or journal cards, that's literally all I use that for. If I'm printing photos, I am immediately reaching for my newest printer, which is my wide format printer. I have a Canon Pixma Pro 100. Um, I'm going to try to remember to leave that in the description box because people always ask me how I print at home. Now, I don't think the Canon Pixma Pro... Actually, I don't think any of the Pixma printers I have are still available. My MG7720 is like four years old. I've had it for a very long time. I have it in gold. They don't even make it in gold anymore. Um, and I bought it when I first started scrapbooking because it was the printer that... It was one of the printers that Ali recommended. And it has lasted for a very long time. Um, and then my Pixma Pro, I bought last year. And I actually bought it second hand because I couldn't find it new anymore. And I bought it from someone who never took it out the box. So when I received it, it was still in, she was in the Bronx. Josh and I went on a bit of an adventure to get this printer. Um, and she still had it in the box, never took it out the box. It still had like the sample inks that the printer comes with. That's how like unused the thing was. So I lucked out. But that's how I got it. I can't find it anywhere else. There are other wide format printers. I am a Canon girl. I like the Canon, the Canon printer system. So that's why I went with that one. Now, if I need to put this, so my journaling is printed four and a half by seven, four and a half by seven. Um, and I'm just quickly making like a quick and dirty little vellum envelope for my journaling to live in but I'm not doing a very good job at it. 
these are the things you forget how to do when you when you stop scrapbooking for a little bit maybe i should do it this way i am obviously quite out of practice when it comes to there are like simple things that i feel like i should know how to do and they then i struggle with them and i get really frustrated because i'm like this is easy why can't i do this like making a pocket and using my scoreboard is probably one of the most basic skills i have and i instantly forgot how to use the thing and do the stuff so so i'm giving myself a lot of grace right now because i'm out of practice um i got adhesive all over the front of my pocket so just gonna rub that off with my finger and there we go there's my pocket where's my journaling here's my journaling which if i did my math right should fit in the pocket and it doesn't look like I did my math right. Oh, that is a tight fit. Okay. And then we're going to put a three right now. A three over the vellum pocket. Um, I really like the way that looks. And part of the reason why I wanted to use a paper that had some red in it is because I wanted to use this red three. And I was not wise because I did not attach the three to the vellum before I stuck it all down because if I was smart, I would just use my tiny attacher to staple it down um, and then put the pocket together, but not very smart today. Um, I think, what do I want to embellish this three with? I have these like random gold chipboard stars. I don't remember where they came from. I think that looks cool. And then some sort of phrase banner would do. What's, what do these say? Maybe not these. All right. I could use one of these and then stamp something. Do I trust my stamping right now? My stamping is being a little, uh, we're not going to talk about the smudge stamping anymore. I'm not sure if I trust my stamping right now. So I'm going to go rifling and see if I can find something. I like the way the green looks on top of the gold, on top of the red and the gold. I like that. On top of the gold foil in the background. I'm really happy with the way that looks. So I'm going to go see if I can find something to put here. And then I shall return. So I found a sticker um, and it says to show you I love you. And I, I had to like stop and like collect my thoughts i mean i probably should explain my my story and why i'm a, a bundle of emotions and why i'm so discombobulated today um so i was in target looking for ornaments um some of you might know this but joshua lost his dad a few years ago um and my in-laws are very near and dear to my heart i got very lucky with the family that i found um and anyways, I was in Target looking for ornaments. Oh, I didn't put this on straight at all. I was in Target looking for ornaments and I saw a, a pickup truck that had, um, hold on, try to make sure this goes on straight, that had um, a bottle brush tree in the back. Uh, actually, here it is. It's this, it's this ornament right here. It's the pickup truck with the bottle brush, the bottle brush tree. Um, and it just made me think of his dad. And then I started writing about that. And, and then there was lots of, lots of emotions that I was not prepared to deal with. Um, and that's not what I thought I'd be writing about. Um, and that's, again, that's one of my favorite parts of this project is that at least the way I do it, it's such a spontaneous affair. Um, it's such a good, it's such a love affair of spontaneity and joy when you just like dig in, right? Like when you dig in and you lean into it and you're like, what, what can this month teach me? Right? Like what is there? that I can learn from, I really want to use this, but the holes are going to go there and it's going to be in the way with the holes. Um, what can this month teach me? What is there that I can learn from this season of my life right now? Um, and that's why that's part of this. That's part of the thing I love about this project so much is that it's an opportunity to really like reflect, right. And to look at the year it's because it's at the end of the year and you know, we're all like, Oh, what, what does this year have to teach me? What did I learn? What did I do? How did I grow? How did I change? All those things maybe I'm the only person that gets super introspective this time of year because I'm a freak I don't know but anyways um, so I was just sitting there writing and then writing and then and then writing and it became this thing that I um, I don't know I, I really don't know how I feel about it I don't think I've ever written about how I felt um, after we lost Joshua's dad and I think that's because he was grieving and 
this might be me overthinking, but I kind of felt like my grief might have been inappropriate at the time. Like that's his dad um, that we lost. And so it felt like, you know, we should be focusing on, I, I felt at least that I should be focusing on making sure that he was okay. Um, and I'm not sure I ever really sat down and worked through how that made me feel until today. And then clearly I had a lot of things, like I felt a lot of things and I had a, a lot of things to say. And so I, the journaling took me quite some time. And then halfway through it, I was like, I don't want to write this anymore. And I find that when I do the things that I don't want to do, that's when I really need to do them the most. Um, so I stuck with it, even though I really didn't want to. And I'm, to say I'm happy with the story, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but it was cathartic. And that, yeah, that's the right word. It was definitely very cathartic to get it out. And so that is my story. I will still haven't decided if I'm reading it. Now, I am literally rifling through last year's embellishments before I dig into this year's stuff because this year's stuff is still in all the plastic and it's going to be very hard for me to find things. So I'm just rifling through last year's embellishments to figure out if there's anything in particular I want to use. And I kind of like that felt heart with that Christmas magic banner. I want to use at least one piece of felt to offset the felt in the number three. Now, from here, also, you got to watch my, like, embellishment process. Like, I literally just pick things up and go, does that work? Does that fit? Is that a good idea? And sometimes they are, and I'm like, cool, that's serendipitous, and I keep going. And sometimes they aren't. Where is the black pleather star that I just had here? Okay, I literally just, oh, there it is. No, it's not. I had a black pleather star, and I want it back. I, it seems to have jumped ship. It will eventually turn up. But that's that's my embellishment process. I literally just keep putting things down and trying to figure out if they make sense, if I'm happy with the placement. I kind of want to use some more sparkle things. So I think I'm going to put this tree there. Um, and that's it. All right. I will go dig it through the rest of my embellishments, pull out some other things, and then I'll be back. So I have found a few things that I think I want to use. I have these gold glitter stars that I think are from either the star kit or some add-on, not sure. And then I'm just gonna start sticking things down. So I really like this felt heart situation. I do think that I'm gonna put the holes in before I keep sticking things down. Cause I just wanna make sure that I leave myself enough room to put the holes and that the heart, like all these things, actually I'm gonna take this off. I can just stick it right back down. Um, I just want to make sure that I leave myself enough room for the holes. And that anything I stick down doesn't start interfering where things are supposed to be. Because that has happened to me more times than I care to admit. Where I like finish embellishing a page and then I go to like punch holes in it. And I have put everything where the holes have to go and then the holes don't fit. And it's just, it's a nightmare. And it's an easily avoided nightmare if you put the holes. Not necessarily first. But definitely early on, so you can make sure that you have your yourself enough space. All right, and I'm also just like stapling things. Okay, how should I stick this? I might have to look for my red line tape if this does not work. We're gonna try this. I'm actually gonna put a super heavy stamp block on it. If I can find one, there it went. Um, there went the stamp block. Um, I'm going to get another heavy stamp block and I'm just going to put a stamp block on it. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to go get some red line tape. And then this felt tree, which is not on camera, this felt tree is definitely from this year because it was still in the, still in the plastic. I really should, well, one, I should get another thing of glue, but I really should unpack my, um, my embellishments so I can actually remember to use them. And I do think I want to put another fray sticker because I did that. Well, I put like that banner here and then I have that fray sticker down here. And I think it would make, it makes me happy to have things kind of repeat. So I am going to grab another fray sticker. Do I want to use another red one? So I decided not to use a red sticker and I went and grabbed a black one that says deck the halls. And I'm going to put another stamp block on top of it because I glued it to the top of that felt. And I don't know if that will stay put. So I'm just going to, that is definitely not staying put. We have to see 
I'm gonna put, I don't know if I have to put like eight stamp blocks on it. Maybe I have to put like eight stamp blocks on it. Okay, so pretty much the only thing left to do um, is one, just put all these pages together and make sure they look okay. And two, adhere this. So I think I'm going to wet glue it up. Just gonna put a bunch of wet glue right on this part of the three. I don't wanna put the whole three down cause I kinda like that it's a little floppy and has a little bit of movement. So I'm just gonna put wet glue right there and stick that down. Make sure that my fray sticker is straight cause I don't wanna put that down and have that be crooked and then just put a little bit of pressure. And that is pretty much that, I think. I think that is that. I just need to pull back my smudge stamping and take a look at everything all together and make sure. But I think that is that for, for the day. So that's gonna go on top of it. That actually feels pretty stable, so that's cool. That's gonna go on top of that. And then just get all these stamp blocks out the way. I have no space on my desk. The, again, working 10 by eight is really fun in a small space because the, the graveyard of supplies on the side of my desk is kind of funny. All right, so the, I just stamped for Christmas is tradition time. Traditions that recall the precious memories down the years, the sameness of them all. Um, it is not December daily for me until I pull out this giant um, stamp set and I probably should show it. So this stamp is actually designed for children. Um, it's designed for kids from pre-K. Uh, I watched Allie use it one year and I bought it three years ago and I've used it every single year since then. And I love having the opportunity to have repeated elements in my album that help to tie the pages together. Um, so yes, that's that. I, is this, is this still wet? All right. When we're done, I'm going to hit it with the heat tool. Um, and then I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it over. It's, it's not, it's, it's not happening. All right. So journaling time, I guess. We will see how this goes. So I wrote, uh, Dear David, there are some days the thoughts of you are ever present and fill my mind like a swarm of angry bees. Like on the days I used the drill we brought home after Kathy cleaned out your work shed to rewind my hand spun bobbins and wonder what you would think of the way we put your tools to use. Or just yesterday when I asked Joshua if we could build a box picker instead of buying one because that's what you would do if you were still here. In days where it seemed like it's been decades instead of a few years, grief is weird like that, isn't it? And I cannot remember what your laugh sounded like. Then there are days like today. There are days when I was roaming tar the aisles of Target and hunting for a few new ornaments to add to the ever-growing stash, pentatonics on repeat, and full of holiday sil- Wow. And full of holiday enthusiasm, and a silly little galvanized truck with a bottle brush tree in its trunk stops me in my tracks. Maybe it's the fact that it's the same color of your pickup and I could immediately imagine you loading a giant fir tree into the bed and carrying it home to set up in the living room. Or maybe it's the fact that my dad just celebrated his 60th birthday and we lost you right after yours. But after holding this scrap of metal close and warming it with my hands, heart, breath, putting it back on the shelf felt like leaving a piece of you behind. I don't know what it is about this season. That makes me miss you more than the rest. What are the holidays but a magnifying glass on the hole in our family where you should be? And what is that house at the end of at the middle of 149 without your big laugh in the living room as I butcher the steaks on the deck wrapped up in your Carhartt jacket, pretending I'm not freezing to death and loving every mini of, minute of it? But hope is heavy in my heart today that adding this ornament, this single piece that is so unlike the rest, will add a bit of your light to our home this season and all the seasons after. I hope heaven plays nonstop country music and all the John Wayne movies you can stand and that watching me fumble with your drill makes you smile instead of scoff and that you know I'm doing my very best to take care of the treasure you left behind. Cheers till we meet again. I've never stumbled reading my journaling as much as I did just then and that's because I was rushing through it. Um, because it was, you know, it's tough. It's tough to tell stories like this. I think they're necessary, necessary stories to tell. Um, but that doesn't make them easy stories. And we can do things to make them look really nice to kind of cover up how tough they are. But, but that's, that's, that's the beauty of life, right? That we get to live the full gamut of the human emotion and that's high and low and everything in between. So, so that's all I have for you today. That's day three in the book with my pictures of my new ornaments. Oh, so I got an alpaca for my spinning, a tree, uh, uh, I just, I could not resist the penguin and the Santa on Zoom, a nativity, because I get a nativity themed ornament every year, my steel truck, 
um, with the bottle brush tree. Those are my five new ornaments and that's day three in the book. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Um, let me know what you thought in the comments. And until next time, keep it crafting, have the very best day and I'll see you around. Bye for now.